What's going on everybody and welcome back to Cedar Flags where we are embarking on a multi-part project. Yes, we have a pretty large project we're going to jump into here and this is going to be part one of probably two, maybe three. I'm hoping it's just going to be two though, but yeah, we'll see how that goes. So usually with these two-part projects, I always ask you guys to help in some aspect in the comments of this video. So this one primarily is going to be naming this ride and we are creating it right now. So, you know, toward the end of the episode, you'll see what it's all about and hopefully come up with some awesome names as I know you guys always do. But yes, this is a River Rapids ride and this is gonna be really interesting. Now, I got a comment a few episodes ago that said to do some water rides over in this area and I thought it was a great idea. So this is my first attempt in this game of building one of these rides. So the track layout actually varies uh, a lot from where it starts to where we eventually get to but yeah I just didn't really know how to build this ride and to be honest I don't really know what these rides are all about like in real life like I, I I know that the point of the ride is to take you through like a river over some rapids maybe you get a little wet and I don't it's just a fun experience so I think that's what we were going for in building this it's not the most like crazy ride in that there's not like a massive drop at any point and I, it's I don't there's a little bit of weirdness with this ride in this game and I'll point that out I think later but yeah it's just a uh, there's there's some little tweaks and things that I, I don't know if I got it right but I feel like this ride's strength is definitely going to be its scenery around it so we're gonna work really hard on that and a lot of that is done well about a little less than half of that's probably done by the end of this episode but the next episode we're probably gonna go ahead and finish up all of the awesome scenery work that we're going to need to do to get this ride to a point where it's actually a really fun and interesting ride so yes inherently the track is pretty cool it winds through this little river it cuts through and goes up in like a cave system or a tunnel or I don't even know what you want to call it but yeah it's really awesome I love that the the cave that we've built the lift hill in actually blocks it from view like I always feel like water rides when you see the lift hill it's a little it, I don't it it can be out of place I guess is what I want to say but yeah I love that it's enclosed in the mountainside and it's it's a really cool like complimentary ride to Alpine Spirit that you will see in the background of this entire uh, video for the most part. But uh, we're going through and tweaking the track a little bit here and there. And this was really out of the fact that I didn't really know how these track pieces work. So you have the basic track and then you can like split the track out into a wider track. And then there's also like a left and right variant of it. And from what I could tell, the only thing that this really changed was where the rafts float in the track. And the, the one that we're placing right now with the middle, like, little wood guides, really, that doesn't, like, it doesn't have anything more than just extra water on the sides. So what we're going to do with that eventually is go through, and there is so much terrain tool <laughs> that we're going to use in this episode. But, yeah, we're covering up the edge of a lot of this track with terrain just to make it look like you're actually on like a river and it's flow flowing through a mountain and i really think that's the the strength of this ride it's it's like one with the scenery so yeah like i said the scenery is going to be very important for this ride and there's just there's a lot of terraforming in this episode so if you're not like if you're not into that i'm sorry but it had to be done there is so much that had to be done to get this ride and the layout of the ride, perfect. So I love that it kind of pulls this whole thing together. Now, we put this little mountain cliffside thing in way back in like episode two or three when we first built our first coaster, which is that big wooden alpine spirit, as you all probably know by now. But yeah, it really wasn't anything more than just some scenery for alpine spirit to kind of go through. But now we're actually using it again and integrating this ride into it, and it's so awesome. And you just saw, I, I'm trying to build up some of this terrain to get it kind of blocking uh, Alpine Spirit a little bit, just because I want it to be its own experience. But it also creates an opportunity to do a lot of cool things with the terrain, 
like put the the big terrain like tunnels through it and all that kind of stuff so yes and then eventually what we're gonna do with that is pretty cool but you'll see that when we get to it but uh, yeah, there was just a lot of, like, revisions done to this track, and I think most of that was spawned out of me not really knowing what I want to do with this ride and just kind of working it as we went. Uh, this entire time lapse is about seven hours worth of footage edited down, and a lot of it got chopped out, believe me. But, yeah, I mean, it's just revision after revision, and uh, up at the top, like, these areas... It was kind of revised just because I didn't know how those track pieces worked. And then when I figured out that the rafts could float from one side or the other, uh, it really influenced the way I wanted to build the track. And I, I love having it kind of come over and like poke out from the side over the track below it. So yeah, it's just really, really awesome. What we're doing is <laughs> revising where the station is. And, and this kind of came out of the necessity because I, w I rode the ride like the original version and I realized that the rafts near the end were really slow so I wanted to give them a little bit more speed so we're actually building the station down into the terrain so there's gonna be a lot of terrain editing probably in the next episode or two to get these looking like they're ground level or trying to work them into the terrain somehow to make it look like it's meant to be there but yeah, we didn't want to just sink the station underground and like leave it in like a pit. So we're going to have to somehow, with scenery and the building for the station, we're going to have to do something about that. But yeah, we are just trying to like do a preliminary like terrain edit on everything here. And really, it was just trying to tweak the terrain to a point where the rafts weren't really like touching the terrain or crashing into it or going through it. That was a lot of like really minute, <laughs> really intricate terrain editing. And I'm not gonna lie, it was very, very uh, annoying at times. It just, you, you had to like get the, the raft right next to it and then take the intensity down to like 10% on the terrain tool and try to make sure that the raft is not crashing into it and make sure that you're leaving enough space in like these caves especially where the riders wouldn't be able to like grab onto anything or anything like that so yeah i mean it was it was a struggle uh, it wasn't really a struggle it was just very tedious work so it really i mean it really was just uh i i don't know it we still aren't even done with it like a lot of the stuff uh on the other end of the rapid section still needs to be terraformed and we'll probably leave that because what I'm hoping to do later is get like a path that runs up pretty much like the, the little rapid stretch of this ride. So people could like almost walk through and like see the people uh, on the rafts coming down through the rapids. I think that could be really cool. Although it could be said that it could be really cool if the rapids were all like kind of enclosed by nature. So I'm not really sure what we're going to do with that, but we'll, we'll eventually get to that. But uh, yeah, just trying to figure out how to get these path systems set up was also kind of a challenge for this episode. I mean, I kind of had an idea of what we wanted to do here, but then it was just trying to figure out how we can work it into the terrain which was kind of, it was the biggest problem. But uh, eventually we get it to a point that's fine. And this was kind of a challenge because once you put a path down in Planet Coaster, you can't edit the terrain under it. It kind of locks the, t the terrain in, which is okay, I guess. It could get really annoying, but uh, you know, it just, it, it's something you gotta work with. So really, when you do this kind of this kind of work, you have to put the paths down where you want them and like do all the terrain afterwards because you can't cut through like really sharp edges of like cliffs. So eventually you have to bring the cliffs to the path, which is fine. It's just a little bit of a learning curve that you have to go through when you're playing this game. But uh, you're seeing... <laughs> When we built the ride, it was in pink, and that was never intended to be the actual color of the ride. Really, the main purpose that I had that done for was to see if we were clipping terrain uh, through the like actual track itself. So having a high contrast color made it really easy to figure out where we needed to like take the terrain down and make sure that the river was running purely through the track. And then at times, we enclosed it and made the terrain come and touch 
the water, which is really a cool feature of this ride. But anyway, we're doing right now is going through and kind of making this little scenic area for the lift hill. Now, we have changed the track to a more uh, neutral color, I guess. It's a really burnt orange, which I kind of like. I guess you guys can let me know if you don't like it. We could always change it, especially at this point in the process. But uh, I really like the chain lift, or it's not even a chain, it's just like a belt lift. But I liked having the belt in the mountain, like I said earlier. But I felt like just having it go through like a straight up tunnel wasn't going to be that cool. So what we're doing is building this really interesting little like almost mine shaft, which I thought was awesome. And really when this is all said and done, this looks so good. But it was kind of a tedious process. So I, uh, I built the frame out. And if you look up pictures of mine shafts, you kind of know what I'm going for here. But we had that little angled plank and we were using that as a guide and we were just kind of following the lift hill all the way down it just to kind of have it like an even spacing and then i mean it wasn't perfect as you can see so after a while we had to go through and after we got these all down we had to tweak the angle at which they were sitting and it was a little bit of a process but eventually we got it right and this is just a really interesting kind of cool uh little area now I, it's almost like a dark ride and I know there's a there's always requests in the comments make a dark ride build a dark ride it'd be so cool and I'm like it would be kind of cool I'm not personally a huge fan of dark rides but the thing about dark rides in this game right now is that you have to build them into terrain so it's a really massive undertaking and at the moment I don't really think it would fit in our park maybe when we expand out and have more area to cover we can do a like proper dark ride but uh, right now, this little mineshaft is probably as dark uh, a ride section as you're going to get from me for a little while. And uh, that's not to say we could always go through and do like a separate project away from this series of just like a dark ride. That could be kind of fun, but we'll see what, what happens with that if we ever get to it. But uh, yeah, this is just going to be completely enclosed later on. And we are actually putting a roof on it right now. But yeah, this was a really interesting kind of claustrophobic project to work on and I actually took a lot of the terrain away from the top as you can see we are gonna put that back in just to get the effect but it was so much easier to build this part of the scenery with like a clear view to the sky because otherwise you're down in like the nitty-gritty and the camera has a tendency to kind of spaz out at times so you'll just be like working on a, a little part of the ride and then you'll hit the wrong button and your camera will fling you like all the way across the park and do weird things with zooming in and out. But uh, just taking the terrain away to make a little bit more space to build was so much better. And with that said, we still had to get down and dirty and into the actual mineshaft itself to try to get these all kind of lined up properly. So the riders, what the riders see is going to be a really interesting, cool semi or actually not semi but pretty realistic uh, little structure in here now i tried to go through it and vary the planks a little bit so it didn't look like a cookie cutter little section that we placed down through it and that's one of those things like if you're having trouble with this game trying to get things to look real if you're just placing things like one after another and they're the same thing that's when it looks not realistic. I mean, that's when you're starting to look really cookie cutter. And in the real world, there's always going to be some sort of like little imperfections. And that's what you try to get just by getting in there and tweaking the angle of the planks or scenery items or bushes or whatever it may be. So that's a little tip that I'd like to give you guys if you are looking for tips. But yeah, you saw us go through and then we covered all of this back up with the terrain. It was kind of dark in here, which is really cool. So obviously we're putting some lights in here and lanterns and just trying to make it look like an actual proper mine shaft. And I, I cannot stress how much I love where this ride is going. I mean, it's not even done yet, but it, it is just so cool. And uh, yeah, we, uh, we had to do a little bit of weirdness when it came to the entrances of this. So we tried to get those big planks in there just to give us a little bit of breathing room to get the terrain locked in around it. It was a little weird if we didn't want to do that because you, you just would have to crush the terrain down perfectly into the wooden areas 
and it would make it look really square. So with these big like wooden blocks that are at the entrances and exits, uh, we could, you know, do a little bit more imperfect work, which makes it look that much better. So yes, just going through that and getting the terrain working out right was uh, kind of tedious, but in the end, I think it, it really adds the, to that area. Now, the next thing that we had to do was we have this little bridge section, which is cool, but it could be cooler. So naturally, we had to go in and do some scenery stuff. And I was thinking like when I first envisioned this, that we would do this really ornate like wooden bridge type structure. But in the end, I mean, we keep it fairly simple and just do a really, really simple like truss type bridge structure underneath this and I think it comes out fairly nice. It's clean and simple, and it's not like a crazy, like, dynamic project, I guess, but just the simplicity of it really adds to this whole thing. And really, I think the thing that ties it all together, we'll get to after we put these support beams in, is the little cement planters, I guess. I don't even know if that's the right term, but you'll see when we get to it. <laughs> right now, all we're doing is trying to figure out how to get these little parts to kind of space themselves out properly and it it works and then eventually we have to just go align it and then pull it over and then flip the parts just to make them hide into the main beam underneath but uh yeah once that's all done we can then move into how this gets fastened to the cliff face now we could have left it as is but realistically if you're thinking about it in like a realism sense there's some sort of foundation that they're gonna have to lay into the cliffside just to get these structures properly like seated up onto the cliff. So we pour some concrete, and I use air quotes there, and I just love how this comes out. I mean, this looks like we've properly dug into the cliff, and then of course we pull the terrain back to marry it up with the uh, scenery there, but yeah, it's just such a nice little structure, and it's really like an understated thing, but it's a huge like, integral part of this whole little bridge here so i love how this came out and so originally i was thinking of just keeping the hills underneath the bridge but then i looked at it and i was like you know what could be really cool here like a lagoon so we have this really interesting little water area down here and it fits really well with the ride because i mean it's a river rapids ride so there's just water all over the place so we're trying to incorporate a little bit more water around this area and I really think this comes out great. And we do some cool scenery things with like shrubs and bushes later on in here. But uh, just expanding this lagoon out. And then eventually we could maybe do some more water around. Uh, maybe in like in between the main path and the station here. And that whole area, which we'll probably talk about more in the live portion of this episode. The whole area over here is going to be like a water ride section. We still have like a log flume that we can build. And then in the anniversary patch that's coming out in November, we'll get a roller coaster that actually goes through water. So that's going to fit in perfectly. And we should have this area pretty much sorted out by then. So I'm actually looking forward to that. And it was just kind of a weird coincidental like timing thing there. But uh, we're doing some more terrain editing now. And over this little area, we're going to eventually do something really cool, and it should be coming up right now. And yes, this is going to be a water section, a waterfall section, rather. Now, these rides in real life will have this sort of thing where it drops water on riders because that's kind of the whole shtick of this little river rafting uh, ride is to get people, like, soaked. And to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of riding these at parks. Mostly because of my extreme, like, hate for wet clothing. Like, I hate when clothes are wet and you, they just, like, stick to you and it's just very... Ah, it, it's really annoying to me. It even, like, making me cringe think about it. But, yeah, the whole point of this ride is to get riders wet. So I figured we could do some sort of interesting little waterfall thing over here. And a waterfall is one thing that people have actually requested me to build. Even back to when we were doing Gravity Mod. Because... I guess waterfalls are just really interesting, and they are, and no doubt, but in this game it's a little weird to build a waterfall right now because you have to use these little sprouts, and if I'm being honest, it, it doesn't look particularly great from up above, 
but when you're down below on the river ride, it's kind of cool because it looks like water's rushing through this little like stream that's going over the riders. And I, I don't know, it's, it's just, well, for one thing, we have so many of these to make it look proper that it's actually, I think, hurting the frame rate of my game when I'm I'm playing but it's really it's not that bad just yet and if we have to like downsize this area we can but uh yeah it's it's a really cool effect and I'm glad we didn't do a waterfall over on Gravity Mod because it left the opportunity to do one here now the ride doesn't actually get affected by this scenery like guests are not going to get wet because they go under this but it is a really interesting little feature and it, as far as like immersion goes, it's it's good for that. But uh, I mean, I think this ride, well, I know this ride's ratings in the game aren't very good. Like it's not a very exciting ride. It's not a very intense ride, but what it is is like a very easy going ride. So hopefully we'll get like a lot of family guests on this ride, but I, I don't know. There's just a, uh, it, it wasn't, I don't, I don't know if the game like, I don't know. I don't know how the game properly like rates this ride and there's certain like weird areas where like the water looks like it just speeds up and then it just stops like on a dime so it's like the track sections are independent and the one thing that I don't really like about this is that every raft that goes down this is literally on a predetermined path so it's not varied like a normal river rafting ride would be so it's a little weird, but it's a limitation in the game that we have to deal with, but uh, I, I don't know. Um, what we're doing right now is going through and doing some of the scenery work. Now, we don't get a lot of scenery work done in this episode. Well, that's a lie. We do get a lot done, but we don't get the entire track done. So what we're doing is kind of the start of the track, and that's really what I on only wanted to accomplish in this episode was getting the, the track laid out and getting the like front of it done. And that is the, the chain lift hill, or not the chain lift hill, the lift hill, and then like some of the scenery throughout the mountainside, because we know we're not going to change the mountainside. Now, what we have left to do in the next episode is the station. We have not touched any of that. So I'm looking for, I guess, suggestions later on when we get into the live portion. You guys can see this a lot better. But suggestions as to how to make the, the uh, building for the station look good and just any general thoughts of what we should do to make this ride really awesome. But I really love how this like starting portion of the ride is when it, it's all built out. And just from the, the mine shaft, like I've already said, to this scenery work that we're doing now, it's so good. Like I love those little uh, little bush shrubbery thing, the the ground cover. I love that we have that coming over the side of the cliff, and we're using the uh, align to surface, and we're just snapping it to the surface. So it looks like there's like a moss or like an ivy or something growing over the sides of cliffs. I I just ah, it looks so good from a distance and. Really, I mean, you're not going to see a lot of it when you're on the ride, but when you're walking up next to it, it's going to look great. So I just, I don't know. It's so good. Anyway, uh, we have so much scenery to do. And honestly, I do cut a lot of this out of the time lapse. I tried to leave in the most interesting parts. And that is, of course, getting all of that crown cover to come over that and make it like drape over the sides of these cliffs. It's just such an interesting thing. And before there was nothing up here and now there's just like actual nature growing out. And then we also go in and put some of these like rocks and stuff in here. And if you're if you've been watching closely, you'll notice that we've actually varied up our rock selection just a little bit. Uh, we have the alpine rocks that we've been using throughout this entire series so far. And then we also use these slightly greener rocks. And I really like how those looked around here because a lot of this is in the shade and it would tend to be in the shade throughout the day. So when you're, when you get those like really shaded areas in real life, you'll get like algae and, and moss growing on rocks and stuff. So I really like how that just gives a little bit of a tint to the shaded areas and it looks a little bit more real, but you saw us go through and actually put some of the nature work in the lagoon. And we'll talk more about that in the live portion, but it's just looking so good. And this time lapse is actually wrapping up now. So we're going to flip it over to the live portion and check out everything that we just did. 
All right, guys, we are live in Cedar Flags looking at the ride that you guys are going to name in the comments. So, yeah, leave your names down there. But, yes, this is what we've been working on. And like I said, this is part one of probably two, if not three parts. So, yeah, you can see just the nature work that's gone on and the track layout, how... This could easily have taken seven hours, and it did, so, yeah, but let's go through and just kind of talk about what we were doing, and talk a little bit about uh, what I was talking about in the time lapse and all that kind of stuff, but, yes, it all starts right here with this really awesome lift hill in this little mine shaft type thing, and I love this oh so much. I It just looks so good. Now, the weird thing about this is getting this to look good. Now, we have a tree floating mysteriously here, but that's because the terrain's not done over here. And this is going to tie in a lot with what we do with the building for this ride. And I'm not really sure what we what we want to do. We might open this cliff up to, like, more over here. I'm not really not sure. It's going to be like a thing where... As we build, we'll figure out more and more what this should look like. Now, originally, this was all kind of enclosed in a cave. But as I was building the mine shaft, it was kind of hard. And I really didn't want to have to go through and do like a curved mine shaft. Even though I guess I could have. It would have just, it would have been a pain. But yeah, I mean, this is going to be great. And I'm thinking, I, I had an idea of maybe incorporating some sort of, like, tower that kind of fits right here and comes up to, like, there or something. Maybe, like, a, a Firewatch tower type thing over here and incorporate that into this uh, station. I, it's, again, it's going to be really strange. And things are kind of subject to change at this point. Like, this whole path could even change by the next episode. But, uh, yeah, anyway, let's work up through the mineshaft itself, and it, it's got such a really, like, interesting view of everything, and I love that the raft just kind of floats all the way through it, and it's just so awesome. And the cool thing about this ride is that riders in the raft aren't only seeing, like, one direction. They are seeing every single orientation, basically, throughout this entire thing. So they're seeing everything including that little clipping terrain, but we'll figure that out uh, and fix that later. But yeah, they're seeing everything. So, I mean, having this completely enclosed, whoops, having this completely enclosed was really a necessity, if you ask me. Now, as we move up to the top, we have all of this scenery done, and it I love this. It looks so good. And you guys know how much I love the ground cover in this game, and that is like these really low-hanging shrubs. It just adds so much, and it looks like we just cut a ride directly through this patch. And then I love how, I, I was saying in the time lapse, I love how this comes over the edge here. It looks like it just had this growing for some time, and it adds some green to what otherwise would be just a really boring gray cliffside. I just really, I, I can't say enough about how well this all came out, so... Yeah, anyway, there's still a lot of work to do, and honestly, we could probably come back into the Alpine Spirit side of things and tweak a lot of this stuff up. And like I said, this might get all changed up a little bit as we build up the rest of this station. But anyway, moving on to the bridge that we did, I, it, it's so understated, but it's so necessary to make this ride look really properly done. And I, I just can't say enough. It looks so good. And especially since it's going over this really awesome little lagoon. Now, like I said, this was kind of a game time decision. I mean, I was not planning on putting water down here, but it absolutely fits with the whole feel of everything around here. And I just, I love how we have some of the greenery growing in the lagoon. But at the same time, we have these dead trees because I guess at one point this wasn't flooded. And then it flooded out, so the trees can't survive in the water because they're not swampy trees. And just these, like, little stick bushes over here growing out. It looks like the, the bushes were suffocated by the water. And I, it's just so good. But anyway, uh, as you move through the bridge, we have these tires that I put down here just to, like, have a little bit of a buffer zone between the pure track and then the foliage. So... In theory, if a, a raft was coming down, it wouldn't just smash into rocks. 
it would get bumped into these little tires and then roll off and, and have like a easier impact onto the rocks. Now, in real life, these rides are free floating. I mean, they are just rafts down an artificial river. So they will go wherever they feel like it and whatever the weight of them kind of dictates they're going. But as you watch these go down here, you're seeing it's really very much just a set path because that's the way the game has been programmed. It's a little bit disappointing, I'm not gonna lie, it'd be really awesome if they could have, like, really, I think, two or three, like, pre-programmed paths that each, every other ride would be able to, like, go down a separate one, where it's a little varied, but it's not, like, the same exact thing every time. But, I, I don't know, I'm not a, I'm not a programmer for Frontier, so. The other thing that I, I kind of have a complaint about is this. You can kind of see it here, and hopefully YouTube compression doesn't do like what it usually does and take a lot of the detail out of this but you can as you watch the water on this section of the track and then if you look down on the next section of the track it looks like there's just a a split in the line here and that's because of the way the slope is on this ride so you can see from one slope section to the next it's not exactly a smooth and fluid transition and naturally like in real life this ride is a fluid ride because there's actually fluids on it but uh yeah it's very very rigid in the track design and for some reason it just it makes everything a little bit weird when you're going to design everything now most notably over here i think you can see that uh, well you can't really see it because we've covered it up with this waterfall section but over here water's coming down very fast and then back over here the ride flattens out a little bit and so it slows down and it actually slows down for a very short period and then speeds back up again. So you'll actually see that reflected in the the rafts themselves. They kind of slow down. So it in theory, like if this ride were real in real life, the water would kind of build momentum as it came down. But in the game, the way it's working, you, you kind of see how it bumps right there and stops and goes a little slower and then it's going to hit here and then kind of just take off a little bit faster again. But in real life, you'd actually be building a little bit of momentum as you're, you know, the water's going downhill. It wouldn't be so rigid, uh, but I, I, I don't know. I, I guess it's a, it's very nitpicky by me, but it's I guess it has a little bit of, like, warranted uh, hatred <laughs> behind it. But I, I don't know. If we actually click on the ride, I can show you. The one thing that actually spurred this little rant is just the overall ratings on this. And again, I, I know a lot of you guys don't play this game for the ratings, and some of you do. But, I mean, a lot of people have told me, don't worry about the ratings. They're really irrelevant in this game, and they kind of are. But at the same time, I'd like to build things that are great. But uh, we just it's just a little tedious, especially with this this ride. Because... Like, by this bend, you should have momentum with the water, and the raft should be kind of flying around this a little faster. But unfortunately, they don't, and it, it's really kind of annoying. And the other thing is that, like, all of these water features don't actually add to the ratings on this coaster. Like, you would think, like, as you go under this little ridge, it'd be cool, and then you get, like, water on you. So it'd be really exciting, right? Because you'd be, like, drenched, and that's part of the attraction of this ride is to go on and you know get soaked but uh you just you don't get that because these don't actually affect the guests but anyway uh so we've seen pretty much everything up to here and the waterfall like i said in the time lapse uh, it's pretty cool up to like when you're looking at it down here it looks really cool it looks like there's water flowing through this like little river up here and then it's splashing down on the backside. Even though, I mean, in real <laughs> in reality here, it's uh, it's kind of clipping through the terrain. That's just kind of the way that these work. They don't actually get stopped by the terrain, unfortunately. But uh, and then coming around here, it looks like you're just going through a waterfall, and that was the goal of that. And I love having this here because it kind of it, it marks the spot for the rapids. Like there is water, extra water flowing in here. And it's going down a hill, so naturally you would have, like, a rapid section here. So, I love how this all kind of came out. And then over here, you'll actually notice that the, uh, even though it's a rapids, the raft doesn't gain any speed, really. I mean, 
even though this is a slope over here, you're not gaining any momentum on this until you hit about here. And then the raft really kind of picks up speed for a very short distance and then just flattens out again. So my big grudge with this ride type is that it's not it's not very fluid and it's just it, it ruins it a little bit for me because it's naturally like a fluid ride. Now, the one thing that I don't think I showed in the time lapse was this little trigger point that we have over here. And we put a little jet of water in here, so it looks like as you reach the bottom of that fast section, uh, it, it shoots water into the air, so that's kind of cool. And it, it also signifies, like, where that fast section stops. So it, it makes it look a little bit more, I think, realistic, because you're hitting the bottom and you're splashing out all the water. And then you just kind of float on from there. And then you go under this really low bridge, which is actually going to be the exit of the ride. So after you've gone through this entire track, you can then walk over here. And first of all, you can check out the lagoon, which is a very awesome staple of this ride uh, track area. And then you go over the ride that you just went on. So you, you know what these people just went through. They're soaked at this point, and you're like, haha, look at this. And then... <laughs> they go under you and it's it's really cool now we're gonna have to build a, a bridge here obviously and that should be pretty cool and we're gonna have to tie in some sort of uh, railing system over here as well but uh, that'll be probably in the next episode and that actually transitions into what we're gonna be doing in the next episode and that is working exclusively well not exclusively we'll be working mostly on the station area for this ride now we have to build something and like I was saying we want to kind of marry up this style with this and you notice there's a lot of extra room in here and that's fine because eventually we're going to be building another ride or maybe even two in here and the log flume and maybe even the future coaster when we get it in the next update will go in this area so this should be fairly interesting now we do have a lot of terrain work to do here because you'll notice that the obviously the station is very low compared to where this rot or this park has been like in terms of uh, terrain height it's been pretty flat for the most part but now we have some varied heights of terrain which i'm actually liking a lot because like i said it is very flat and i love getting into more of like a, a, a differing terrain and it's just gonna make it look a little bit more natural because i mean when you are building a theme park, it's really hard to find this big of a flat piece of land. Just a little bit of variety goes a long way. It's very hard to find, like, a truly flat area in the world because everything's generated naturally. So varying this a little bit makes everything a little bit more natural. And it gives us the opportunity to do a lot with, like, scenery work. So I'm very much looking forward to that. And if you guys are, too... Let me know with a thumbs up. If you dislike this in any way, thumbs down. Uh, guys, you have to name this ride. And you can also give me suggestions on anything you've seen in this episode. What do you want to see with this ride? What do you want to see built into this? And uh, do you want to see the, the colors tweaked or anything? Let me know. I'm all ears. And guys, we'll be working on this in the next episode. So if you're excited, stick around. And until next time... I'll see you guys back here in Cedar Flags.